Okay, we're going to go through another simple object drawing breakdown. Um, again, in real time so that you see the kind of pace that you could work at. Um, you know, you might go through it slower and add more steps if you need to. The first stage um, when you're learning this is to begin with the flat shape. And this is a mode of analysis. It's not really representing something. You know, you're just going for hey, what are, what are the shapes involved? You know, what are, get an idea of the proportions. Uh, you notice details that you don't notice at a first glance when you start to do this analysis. And if you become like a concept designer or you design props, this is a fantastic way to begin because you don't have to think about the dimension at the same time. Um, and it allows you just to think through the silhouette what does the outline of this look like? What projects in, what projects out? And what forms is this going to be composed of without the pressure of doing fully realized forms? Um, and you can move fast because of that. Um, there's a saying that we have in my family that, you know, slow is fast. So if you take your time and really analyze this, this seems like an extra step, you know, you could be just drawing and rendering. Um, but this allows you to speed up overall because when you go to the final version, you know exactly what you have to draw. And um, that process really helps. And again, up at the top, I have my basic notes, you know, simple shapes, simple forms. You know, we know what components we're going to use for this just by looking at it. There's a box form on the wall. There's a sphere, there's a cone, and we're going to use lots of triangles and lots of little arcs to construct this. Because um, when you see the, the overall form of what holds this little light up, it's mostly triangles connected by arcs. And because this is kind of a two-part thing, there's a mount and the light itself, you know, more or less like an ice cream cone. Um, I tried, I did two little sketches to analyze flat, one from the side, just kind of getting from the wall to the base, and then the other, the, the full uh, lamp itself. Now the trick is to go ahead and draw the full thing fully realized. And, um, you know, this is one where you kind of have to get something down and measure it and figure out how tall that you want to get it. So here actually did some actual measurement there. Um, and here, uh, this is a slightly different tweak on the process. This time I actually repeated those same two dimensional shapes, with just a circle and a triangle. And then you can do something cool with it where you can then convert it to a form. Um, and here I'm gonna actually tilt it down from the, from the picture, but where that straight line is, I'm just gonna convert that to an ellipse and then build out based on what I did in the other drawing and what I reobserve while looking at the reference photo. You know, I use a reference photo here, but you, know, you don't have to use photography, right? In fact, it's probably easier to learn if you have objects in front of you and you can pick them up and hold them and turn them around and look at them. That way you get a full understanding of the form. So here we're doing the same thing. We're kind of keeping the outer contour the same, but instead of going straight across, we're going to use arcs to create the uh, idea of the ellipse. And we want the, the same arc to kind of carry through every time. Otherwise, it'll look a little bit weird, like the form's bending when it shouldn't be bending. And at any point in this process, you can change, you can make changes. You know, you can change the proportions, make stuff bigger, smaller, because we haven't gotten so dark that we can't work backwards yet. Um, you know, and I do that all the time. Um, you know, they're not mistakes, you know, because what it is, is you're trying to find this. You're trying to discover this thing as you draw it, discover what it looks like on paper. And that inevitably changes from the first lines that you put down. Like we can notice, r uh, right immediately that the, that the actual, um, globe of the lamp is way too small. So we'll have to go back and fix that later. And here we can do a simple form to get us back. 
uh, to the wall here. And what we've done is basically an elongated box form that goes backwards and then it connects to another box form that sits on top of another box form. That's what connects us to the wall. And then here I'm paying very close attention to uh, to tangents. Like I really, really don't want to create uh, anything that lines up exactly with the edge of the lamp itself. So I'm trying really hard to create a little bit of difference there. So here, you need to go back and change that proportion. And that globe is going to run off the page, which is kind of a mistake. Um, but then this is only an 8 by 10 piece of paper. It's pretty small. I'm trying to draw big enough to show you. Now these forms, you know, they don't, uh, any kind of sphere doesn't really show form until you light it. So when you put an ellipse across the sphere softly, it begins to suggest its dimension. And then what I like to do with line drawing is to go back and really reobserve one more time, look at the reference, and then start to get uh, a much cleaner sense of what, what this form is doing. You may have to resharpen the pencil at this point just to get a good fine tip. Make sure we have our transitions the way we want them. And just slowly and carefully work your way down through the object. And if you see something on the object that's like very subtle, but you want to include it in the drawing, you need to exaggerate it so that you can actually physically see it because sometimes details are too small and the medium doesn't really allow you to get those details in. So sometimes you have to embellish and, and exaggerate for the sake of the drawing itself. And you know when you're working on a table like this, you have this incredible ability to turn the paper around and to draw at different angles, and that'll help you see what's going on. And it'll be easier to draw certain lines that way too. Um, this is a distinctive part of the form that we didn't include on the shape analysis, but it has these little divots that go all the way around so I think we need to include them because it's very characteristic and we have enough room now that we're drawing big. Okay. And, you know, this looks dark, these contours, um, but they're not the full black that the pencil can go. You want to stay um, right around the core, maybe, if you're going to do heavy line work. You can also use... Um, soft line work for a while and then come back at the very end and pick up the line work that you want. When we add details, we're always looking for details that add distinction to the form and um, add dimension. So if it gives it a unique quality and makes it dimensional, that's definitely a detail to include. Details not to include are sort of textural things um, that you see on there and color shifts and changes. Those are something that you would get very much later uh, if you're going to render everything. But here we're not out to render. We're ha out to study an object and study its forms. That's something completely different. Um, rendering, we would follow the light exactly as we see it in the in the photograph, and you know that's not what we're after, right? We're not after copying photos. There's better things to do with do with your time uh, when you're learning. And so here we're using the five value system again, just putting a tone where there's going to be shadows, imagining light coming from the from the upper left. And um, keeping it very simple. And here we're at the point where more or less we've completed the sketch and we can move on to something else or take this to a finish, right? Um, and when you're sketching, you know, it is really just that. You're not really going for anything complete. You're not having to push. Um, here, 
I'm pushing to get into the core tones and even some drop shadow tones where we're getting much darker just to give this object some punch. Um, and you can kind of choose when to finish. And the neat thing about using a method like this is you can pretty much stop at any point and it'll still look relatively interesting. Um, and this is a great way to generate ideas and see what ideas to pursue um, because we know very early on if you're if your object drawing is effective, especially if you're designing an object that doesn't exist. You know, if you're working on a film or a TV show or something like that, um, this is a great skill to have in your pocket. So remember to use the simple forms, use the five value system, and use this analytical process to get a successful object drawing.